Samuel, it's so good to see you again. Why, look at you. It's been three years and you look as if you haven't aged a day. Pastor Stephen, you're too kind. It's good to see you also. Things look a little different around here. I went to pull in the parking lot, and it was gone. Yes, we had some problems with vandalism, and so we tore it out, planted some grass, and then contracted with the city to be the only ones allowed to park along the street here. Some of the local businesses complained, but one of our newest members is a very influential city council member, and thanks to his help and a little financial incentive, we have safer parking for our members now. Come inside. I don't think you're going to recognize the place. But Steve, barbed wire, security cameras, it's just not, well, very inviting for a house of worship. And what is this? That, my friend, is a facial scanner. All the members of the church need to do is walk up to it, stand with their face directly in front of it, and when the camera recognizes them, the doors will automatically open. Everyone was more than willing to be scanned and put into the database. It gives us all a greater feeling of security. Well, if it makes them feel more at ease, then I suppose it has some useful purpose. But what about those who are not members, the ones that simply want to come and hear the message on Sunday morning? Oh, we have guards stationed both outside and inside for those occurrences. Although of course we don't call them that, we call them associates. They're actually hired personnel from a local security company. As for those who wish to enter the church who are not active members, as long as they meet our strict standards, they are more than welcome. My goodness, things have indeed changed quite a lot in just three short years. Might I ask, Pastor, just what strict standards are you referring to? Oh, you know, Samuel, just the usual. No torn or smelly clothes. No street bums just looking for a place to get out of the rain or the inclement weather. No drugs or those terrible junkies. As long as we're sure they're here for the right reason, all are welcome. Well, you're correct, Stephen. Things have changed around here. And not just the exterior of the building. This doesn't seem to be the same humble church I remember from when I was here last time. That's nothing, my friend. Wait until we step inside. You're not going to recognize the place. Oh. My. Oh. My oh my. This is not the church I remember visiting just three short years ago. Well, what do you think, Samuel? Pretty impressive, isn't it? Have you ever seen anything like it before? I really can't think of any words to express myself, Stephen. About the only thing I can compare it to at the moment is the pagan buildings of the Roman Catholic cult. How did this all come about? If I recall correctly, when I was here for my last missionary trip, you had about 50 or so people attending, and it looked nothing like this at all. Yes, that's right. But you won't be meeting any of those former members tomorrow when you stand on the stage, my friend. Well, I should correct myself. There are still a few of them here but most have gone on to other churches. What do you think of these two statues here? Just look at the craftsmanship. We had them custom made in Italy by a very talented young man and had nearly one million dollars apiece. I would say we got our money's worth, wouldn't you? But Stephen, how did all this come about? When did all this happen? How was all this paid for? Well, right after you left from your last visit, a man came to the church a very wealthy, very persuasive man. He started talking to me about how we could bring a much wealthier group of individuals into the church. How with people like that, people with great financial resources, we could reach even more of the lost. I took his advice, and within just a few short weeks, we had nearly every pew in the church filled with those of great wealth. And all this, well, this is what gives all of us here a feeling of being closer to heaven. I don't mean any offense, Pastor, but I'm starting to see why those who were once a part of your congregation left. This is all quite a lot to take in. You haven't seen the best of it yet, my good fellow. These pews were in one of the oldest churches in Paris. We had them restored by a woodworking master there, 
and then brought them here and placed in the order you see them. That actual gold leaf on each and every one of them. The rug is from India, very ancient, and I might add, very expensive, as are the chandeliers, each one of them handcrafted, and those are actual jewels on them. But just wait until you see the best part. Stephen, these people you're speaking about, these new members, where did they come from? How did all of them come to be at the church in such a short period of time? And how is it that all of them are so wealthy? Well, my old friend, good news travels fast. It seems that the very wealthy are also very spiritual in their own right. Many of them had been looking for a place to attend on Sunday morning, but they didn't care for the standard church, if you know what I mean. There was too much pomp and self-righteousness in some they had attended, and in others they were made to feel as if they owed the Lord something. They do owe the Lord Jesus Christ something, Stephen. They owe him their lives. They owe him their very souls. Yes, yes. But that's all beside the point, isn't it? Everyone here understands that we owe a debt to the Lord, and that's why we're building the most beautiful, most expensive church in the whole of the land. I do not like to brag, Samuel, but my salary has increased exponentially. Why? I purchased a house right on the beach, and with cash at that. I'm not sure I'm in the right place, Stephen. I'm not sure I could be here tomorrow to speak to these people about the mission work that the Lord has set on my heart. Something just doesn't seem right. Oh, but you must. I believe I can guarantee you that you will walk out of here tomorrow with a check that will surprise you beyond belief. Now, look at this. The chairs and the rest of the stage are out of the same old church and have gold leaf covering them as well. And the cross with Christ hanging on it was also custom made for us at a cost of over two million dollars. Look around Samuel. Everything is new and beautiful. There's over 30 million dollars invested so far. And we have even greater plans than this. It would be the finest church in all the land. But Samuel, how did it happen so fast? What could have possibly led Stephen to become so worldly? I don't know for sure, dear. I keep coming back to what he said about a persuasive man speaking to him. I think someone from our adversary was able to deceive him. He has been blinded to the truth by the deceitfulness of riches. Well, what do you think? Are we still going to go tomorrow morning? Do you think it's wise to speak about the mission work the Lord has led us to in such a place as what the church has become? They are worldly people in a building meant to worship the living God, my dear. We are called to reach out to those who live in the world. But, I also think there is a trap being set for us, and so we will pray the Lord will keep us safe, that he will reach out with the truth to them, and then, we will begin our long journey back to the work he has called us to, for his glory. And once again, I want to thank all of you for attending this morning and listening as this old missionary revealed the truth of the word to you, and the needs of those who have little. But, I would ask you to contemplate these two verses before I leave you today. The first one would be from James 2.5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? And the last will be from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 19. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Thank you again for your time and attention. May God be merciful to you. Pastor, Pastor, you are back. We have missed you so much. Quickly, you must follow me. Come quick. Isaiah, what is it? What has happened? This way. Come this way. Hurry. You must see this. It is a miracle from God himself. Well, will you look at that? 
Isaiah, I am so happy for you. It is indeed a blessing from the Lord. Amen, my brother. And not only do we now have light for our humble home so that we can read and study his word when the sun has set, but we also have a fine rock to cover our dirt floor. I give him thanks, for he has blessed us abundantly.